Hello everyone, welcome to Cabbage Patch Soap. My name is Laura, and today we are making a dinosaur themed soap. This was a viewer suggestion. And if we have time, I may go ahead and make another batch of the body butter. We'll see. So I'm just going to give everybody a couple of minutes to join the stream. I do not have a soap from the last live to cut because we made the body butter. So we'll be going straight into the making of this soap. Hi, Ian. Welcome. Yes, we are making a dinosaur soap. So I'm just going to be getting my gloves on here. <laughs> dinosaur soup. No, no. Hey, 007. Welcome. Do you have a 00 sir with you? Yeah, dino soup does sound pretty good. Hi, Stacy. Welcome. I'm just putting my gloves on. And then we'll go ahead and get started. Also, I do have plans for a vanilla body butter. And I will be making um, another one of those lavender and oatmeal soap batches. Um, since we had a request for it. Hi, Lorna. Welcome. And I think you said that, you, uh, Stacey, I think you said uh, orange, purple, and green, right? I hope so, because that's what I did. I'm just grabbing my face shield. Just reading what you're saying here. Oh, wow, Stacy! Sounds like your cat found something. Maybe it's a raccoon. Okay, so... Oh. I knocked over my face shield. That is not... That is not the right way to do this. Okay. Yeah, it could be a possum. That could be another cat, maybe. Stray cat. All right. Um, right. Okay. <clears throat> also, for Ian, I have a really... Uh, in my opinion, excellent idea for some footprints. I think you'll understand later as we uh, make the soap. Okay. <clears throat> so I've got the light water here. And these are the oil oils. And these are the usual oils that I make my soaps out of. So it's got um, olive oil, coconut, palm, and castor oil. Oh, and we can go ahead. Well, hmm. I always hesitate to put the fragrance in right away because who knows what will happen. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this in and then add the fragrance a little bit later. And we're going to be dividing this into two different uh, greens and then doing an in-the-pot swirl and then pouring it into the mold. 
Um, so go ahead and put this in first. Right. And then I'll go ahead and mix this. So headphones warning. Whoops. So I conveniently make a mess. And I just want this just mixed because we're going to be um, separating it anyway. So, okay, that's good enough for me for now. And here's the second a second container. I'll go ahead and put the fragrance in. Um, the fragrance I decided to use is called Smell the Rainbow by Nurture Soap. It smells like Skittles. And kids really like this fragrance. So, I mean, everybody likes this fragrance, but kids typically recognize it um and if you want to encourage children to wash their hands then having a soap that smells like candy is a really good way to do it and i'm just going to mix that in just so that we don't have uh, any loose well any pockets of fragrance okay. plus this fragrance doesn't accelerate typically so and that's always a plus. So I'm going to go ahead and pour off about half of this, roughly. Nah, maybe a little more of this. Okay, and then I've got two different greens. I've got a slightly darker green in here. And um, this is Alpine Green from Nurture Soap. And this one is Green Vibrance from Nurture Soap. So I will start with the lighter one. And here's the... These are the little packets of the two different ones, Alpine Green and Green Vibrance. You can kind of see how they look in the package here, but my camera is not going to properly pick it up, probably. All right. I'm just going to mix this one in first. Whoops. And I don't want this to accelerate too much because... I want to be able to, I want it to be pretty fluid when we pour it into the mold. Okay, so I'm going to stop there and go to the next one. Okay, so there's the second one. Hi, India. Hi, India. How are you doing? We're just making the dinosaur soap today. So I've got the slightly darker alpine green here and then the green vibrance here, which is a little bit lighter. And uh, let me go grab a spatula for this just in case. And I don't need this anymore, so I'll take that off. I feel like I sound like soap Vader in that thing. All right, that's better. Oh, that smells so good. All right, so what we'll do is get this mold and I'm going to pour the lighter green into this darker green into a couple different places so that when I pour it in the mold, um, you should be able to see the different layers essentially of, uh, you know, the two different greens should show up, basically. You should be able to see them pretty easily. I'm hoping this will all fit in here because I wanted to use this long spout bottle because I feel like, yeah, it looks like it's going to fit. Um, I feel like it's easier for you guys to see what I'm doing when I use, when I pour with those. Um, there we go. And I think for a resin, this is called a dirty pour. Maybe. I think I've got that right. We'll find out. Okay. So, <clears throat> I'm going to be putting in some dinosaurs. But first I want to put a little bit of this soap batter. Um, 
and that way there won't be any major hopefully there won't be any major air pockets oops underneath the dinosaurs so of course the first thing i do is dump it on the table that's important important first step let me just For some reason, I had this sitting here instead of my uh, instead of my soap towels, and these are not as effective at cleaning it up as my blue ones. All right, but we'll just have to make do because I don't want to get up and get the other ones. All right, so first, mm, I guess I should have thought this through a little better on how exactly. Yeah. Okay. So first, we're going to put in these. So here are the orange ones. These are going to be T-Rex. I don't know if we can kind of see the design, kind of, sort of. I'm trying not to let this fall apart. So I'm going to put him in first. And there we go. I'm going to put him in here. And that way I'm going to put some soap batter down there. So that, oops, there we go. It keeps trying to, I don't want it, you know, because the soap batter is going to push it away from the, uh, sides of the wall. Okay, there we go. I'm going to stop there. This this batter is so fluid. Okay. I mean, it's good, but it's also making a mess. All right. I'm just tapping out the air bubbles because I'm hoping there won't be any major air bubbles underneath the T-Rex. Okay. And now I need to I wanted these to stay together because the ends of the bar get cut off anyway, so it doesn't matter uh, on the ends if there's no dinosaurs because it doesn't, that's not going to show up. But I didn't want a big gap in the middle. It'll be okay. Actually, it's fine. It's just the very top. It's not straight. That's all it is. Okay, so that's actually fine. I'm just going to position this a little bit better. All right, there we go. Okay, so he's in there. And now, let's see, I'm just double checking what you guys are saying. Oh yeah, Lorna, the greens are really pretty. I like, the, I like these greens that they have. They're really, really, they're nice without being, I don't know, sometimes greens can be kind of artificial looking and these are really pretty. I'm gonna try pushing this back a little further because Hang on. Okay. I'm also trying not to muddy this too much, but I might not have a choice. You think they're cute, Stacy? Yeah, they are. They these the little the, the the method I decided to go with I think was much better because the other way would have taken um would have taken far too long and I think the little dinosaurs would have shrunk up too much. There was and there was no way to get them out without damaging them. So um this was a much better method, I think. So we'll hopefully see that uh these turned out hopefully like when we do the cut okay so here um this is a uh, this is a triceratops hopefully that's gonna you can see what that looks like almost thing and they're the purple ones and again i have to do this and hopefully not trap any air bubbles underneath it uh, my concern is that this batter is still really fluid i feel like i should let it set up for a couple minutes let me just see Okay, it is thickening up. Okay, so maybe it's fine. All right. Oh, it's just too wide to fit. Okay, hold. On. Let me get one of them off of here. And just take a take a narrow one off the end maybe. We just need about a fraction of an inch clearance okay that one on the end doesn't want to come off and i don't want to damage it so i'll take the larger one and we'll just center it better when we put it in there we go hoping this sticks together so i'm going to put it in like tail first and hopefully that'll push the air out as it lays forward but i don't know and tap out the air bubbles hopefully now there might be some air trapped underneath there and uh but hopefully not just nudge these back a little bit. Okay. 
All right, so all right, so those are in. They're centered enough that when the samples, when the ends are cut off, um, they all the bars will have dinosaurs. I'm just checking here. Oh, hey, let's try Sarah's Good. Oh, this is mom's name is Sarah. That's perfect. From the Land Before Time, right? All right, I'm going to go ahead and put some more green on top here. I'm just going to tap this to get it a little bit flattened. All right, so, hmm, debating if I want to texture the top. I think I will. I think I'll go ahead and put some texture. So I've got this uh, plus one fork of texture again. There we go. I think... Uh, I think we'll go ahead and do like the trees. Um, hmm. No, I've got something else in mind actually. This will be better. Maybe. I'll put a little bit more. Okay. All right, let's see what this does. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, all I'm doing is kind of poking it and pulling up to make the green kind of poke up hopefully like grass. Now I don't know if this is going to stay because the, I don't know if this batter is, is uh, set up enough for it to hold. Let's give it a couple of minutes and I'll come back and texture it better. Cause I got, I've got another, uh, I've got another embed to put on there. The mystery embed. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure which dinosaurs to pick. I got a um, I got a set of the cutters to make the different ones, and um, I really, really wanted to put a brontosaurus in there. But the way that the cutter was made, the brontosaurus, the so like the brontosaurus has like the long body, right, and then it's got like the head that comes up, or the neck that comes up, I mean, and then that, like a little tiny head. That whole part of the cutter is sealed off. So there was no way for me, to, I mean, I tried and tried. I couldn't get the brontosaurus out of the cutter without the head and neck snapping off. So I don't know how I'm, how I'm supposed to use that one. I might take maybe like a, uh, uh, like a wood, you know, those wood burning kits or something and like maybe burn off the plastic around there so I can get in there and push that out without snapping it. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, I'm still going to use the brontosaurus, but I'm going to use it in a different way after we cut the soap. We'll probably have to make that a, another video after we cut it. <laughs> He's been a dinosaur every year since he was two. That's cute. I mean, what kids don't like dinosaurs? Even I like dinosaurs. Okay, let's see how thick this is. Okay. Eh, almost. I really want this to be set up a little more, but I think that'll actually be okay. It's got the texture. Yeah, that's that's fine. That's That looks good. Okay, so here's the last one. Ta-da! We've got dinosaur footprints. And what I want to do is put a couple of footprints on top of each bar. Like it's going through the grass. So... Uh, and these are gray, so maybe they're like little fossil footprints or something. I thought that would be really cute. So we've got these little, I don't want to transfer the green onto them, little footprints. And now they've stuck themselves to the paper. But I wanted something that looked like stone, and I found these, I have this, um, the soap dough that's like this, I took some, uh, black and white mixed it together for a different project and it came out really silvery and kind of like a granite color so we'll go with that all right
Oh, I'm so glad you guys like them. Okay, awesome. I wasn't sure. I was like, this is a gamble, but yeah. I wanted to do like a normal left-right pattern, but then when we cut the bars, they would all get cut in half. So I'm hoping doing it this way, um, we'll be able to cut in between the footprints. That is the plan. So hopefully that happens. All right. So there's those two. I'm going to try to put the little interesting ones, like the interesting, like the ones with the, uh, like the white and the gray and whatever, have that facing up. Yeah, there we go. This one's pretty. Maybe this one was walking faster than that one. Okay, now we got, let's see, a couple more. And I made an extra one because you never know. If you don't make an extra one, then you'll something will happen to one of them and you'll wish you had the extra one. Okay, let's see. That one's toe is bent a little bit, so we'll use these two. Okay, so hopefully these little feet, I mean footprints, hopefully they... Uh, Hopefully they're between the wires. Um, but yeah. So that is the little dinosaurs and the little dinosaur footprints. I'll put this aside. Oops. And then I'm still going to be doing the brontosaurus probably after we do the cut. I'll show you how we'll do that. Um, what I really wanted was a pterodactyl like to be in the sky flying, but I couldn't find a, a cutter for it. Oh, we need to put this extra soap batter in something. Let's see what we got. Aha. It's got some soap crumbs from the last time we made soap. Oh, and I've got this. I should just measure, make sure I've got these all an inch apart. Call it disappointment ahead of time, I guess. Never mind. I'm not going to stress about it. Okay, so I'm going to get the spatula, and hopefully both shades of green will come out, like after the soap sets up, you'll be able to see a little bit of like variation in the greens. Hi, Patty, welcome. I'm going to pour it in here. And we could put the last footprint on top of this. So there's that with the little footprint. I was thinking of putting the triceratops on there, but it broke when I pulled it off the end. So well, let's see. Yeah, that's kind of yeah, it's beyond so what I can do before the soap sets up. So I'll have to make something else with that. Oh, you know what we could do? We could put little. Well, I have a better idea. Because I don't want to... I think that's cute enough the way it is. I don't want to add anything to it. Okay. I'll put the rest in here. Because there's still quite a bit of batter. And I can break up the purple. And use it to decorate the top of the green. There we go. Okay, good enough. And 
swivel out the side. All right, and I can break up this purple and just decorate the top with it. Not sure you guys can see what I'm doing. There we go. Since the uh, since it broke anyway when I pulled it off, might as well. So now you've got. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, never mind. Yeah, so you've got uh, green and purple. So, there we go. I guess you could say dinosaur egg with spots or something, maybe? Thank you, Patty. I'm glad you like the feet. There we go. Alright. Found that finally. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside because um... Let's see if I can stack all this. I want to do the, the body butter. But first, first, let me put the uh, soap in the oven so that nothing unplanned happens to it. I've got enough, uh, enough random things going on. The last thing I need is uh, for me to leave the soap out and not have it gel. So I'm going to set this Yeah, fossils. There you go. Exactly. Little fossils. Purple fossils. Because all fossils are naturally purple. Alright, I'll I'll be right back. Oh, and here's the up close to finish soap. So, okay. All. all right, I'm back. Okay. Just double checking what you guys are saying real quick. Oh yeah, double seven. That'd be cute. Little little uh, like dragon eggs or dino eggs or something. That'd be cute. Super cute. A prize in yourself. You wash your hands. I used to have soaps like that. Um, I have little erasers. Oh. Hmm. Let me see which ones I have on the shelf right now. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So. Should have thought of this. Although. Doesn't stop me from doing it later. Um, these are little dinosaur erasers. So you've got, looks like a, I don't know what that is, brontosaurus. There's a cloud. Uh, that one's unicorn. T-Rex. And I used to put them inside the little melt and pour soaps for kids. And then that way, after they wash their hands, they have an eraser that they can use. So I may have to, uh, may have to go back to that again. I can't tell if this is trying to be a stegosaurus or a brontosaurus. I mean, oops, there's the camera. Of course, it's not going to focus. It's like a brontosaurus, but he's got hearts down his back for some reason. Okay. Anyways, maybe I can, uh, make a set of soaps with those. I just have to lock this back up again. I had another set as well that was um, it was like Valentine's Day themed and it had just various little hearts. And I think it was hearts and teddy bears or something. And I used those also. But these are the dinosaur ones. There we go.
Yeah, it'd be cute in an Easter soap. It would. I agree. Okay. Oh, I remember. Yeah, the other one was uh, it had bears and uh, hearts and bears. And those ones I did for uh, Christmas. I put a little bit of glitter in it. And um, yeah. Let me just get rid of all this real quick. All right, so I think I think we do have enough time. Let me just uh, move this aside. Move the colors and the soap. Let's go ahead and do the body butter. This one, this body butter is um, scented with Love Spell. And... Trying to find the best place to put this. Okay, there we go. This is the one I showed you guys last time. It has a little bit of like a, a sheen to it. A little bit of like a gold or something. It's really, really pretty. Just double checking. Yeah, very cute. Yes, exactly. They were very cute indeed. The kids liked them. And then I had one with spiders, but the spiders were actually made out of soap. Just getting the mixer. Okay. I can unplug this one. I just have to switch out all the tools around here real quick. And I should probably get a new spatula. So I'll grab that. Ta -da. I'm going to just put this together real quick. So this one is scented with Love Spell. Um, if you weren't here for my last one, um, what I put in my body butters is I put cocoa butter, shea butter, coconut oil, almond oil, jojoba oil, tomato oil, and vitamin E. And then, of course, the fragrance and the, the color and everything. And um, it does not do well in warm weather, so I can only ship these during the winter. And if you live in a warm climate, just be careful because it may actually melt a little bit in shipping. And that's totally fine. It won't affect how this works. It, you know, it'll, it'll still work just fine. Um, you just, I would just recommend sticking it in the fridge let it firm up a little bit before you use it. Because you only need a tiny, tiny bit. This stuff is so rich. Uh, because I use a really high percentage of those butters. And um, what I do is I whip it up. And then I put it in like a, a Ziploc bag and then pipe it into jars. So I'll go ahead and uh, we'll start whipping this up and then I will get a, a bag that we can use to pipe it into the jars. So go ahead and stick this in here. you guys are saying here real quick yeah patty um pretty much everything i list on my shop page so um so yeah this does have coconut oil in it i can make one without coconut oil but i would need to find something to substitute it i just use it because the coconut oil um feels really really good on the skin and a lot of people like when i used to go to shows and sell these at like the craft shows and the farmers markets and things like that. 
um, I would have like a little sample. This is before COVID, but I would have like a little sample jar out that people could try. And I had like little sample sticks. And um, they liked how the coconut oil felt on their skin. So that's why I put it in mine. Um, but if you wanted, if you wanted some without the coconut oil, I could make another recipe without it. Let me see what you guys are saying here. Yeah, Stacy. Yeah, it's been the weather's been all over the place. It's kind of it's like it needs to make up its mind. Yeah, and aloe. Yeah. I don't put aloe in too many things. Let me see, which is Oh, and our, our Russian bot is back. Okay, let me go ahead. I'm gonna keep mixing this, it might get loud, so Okay, so it's starting to get really um, smooth and it's lightening up in color a little bit. So I'm going to stop here. I'm going to scrape all the sides down, get everything mixed in. Um, and what this does is it just gives the, the body butter a really like smooth and fluffy uh, feel to it. So that you don't have like any, hopefully there won't be any solid pieces of the butter in here. That won't affect anything other than just how it feels on the skin, but um, I try to get it nice and nice and fluffy if I can. Okay. And you can see it's already like growing in volume here. Okay. Which is exactly what we wanted to happen. All right. I'm going to do a little more mixing. Thanks, Lorna. Yeah, I like, I love how it looks. It's always so pretty. probably good enough um I'm just gonna check it this one um like I said it's got the um scented with love spell which is one of my favorite uh of the fragrances like the really ultra feminine this this one's less floral and more fruity I'm just checking this yeah this looks really good okay so what I'm gonna do let me go grab a bag I thought I had one here, but I think I think I used it for something else. I'll be right back. See what you guys are saying here. Yeah, it does look kind of blue. It's like a, I would say it's a very pale, like very pale mint green. But yeah, it definitely has blue tones to it. But it's not a true blue. Let me just adjust this real quick. There we go. That's better. Okay. Also, I keep forgetting to do this at the beginning, but if you guys have a YouTube channel or social media or anything that you want to share, go ahead and leave a heart in the comments or in the chat and the name of your social media so people can find you. I'm going to fill this bag real quick. I 
Oh, and let me grab the jars also. All right, so I've already sanit I've already sanitized these, and I'll go ahead and start taking them out of the con container here. I think it'll be easier for you to see what I'm doing if I take them out of the box, so I'll do that. Maybe after we do this, I can show you how they look side by side with the uh, pink ones. I like to give them all all the different fragrances a like different color, so that when you line them up, they look all pretty and colorful. Yep, Stacy has Instagram. She's got a lot of cool stuff on there, like her cat, for example. I'm just going to fill this up and then we'll use it kind of like a piping bag, but instead of making the fancy ruffly swirls, it's just going to kind of fill the jars. And the reason I do that is because the pretty fluffy ruffly designs, I feel like they look pretty in the jar, but then in shipping, they just settle. And then, you know, you think you're getting this really cool, pretty design in the, in the body butter and it just it doesn't arrive that way or I like those pictures where they put twice as much butter in the jar than it can hold and it looks all pretty sticking out the top and all that but then like the jar you get obviously you can't put the lid on so anyways i just decided to skip all that and fill it properly and then uh, i may i may one day change my mind if people want it the other way but um, like if you guys decide you want, they're pretty roughly looking the, inside the jars, but, um, go ahead and do the last few drops here. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and close the top here. Just double checking what you guys are saying. Yeah, Stacy, right? They make it look bigger than it is, yeah. I mean, I know it's just to make it look really cool and pretty and, you know, it's sort of like, you know, they say you eat with your eyes first and it's sort of the same thing when getting, um, you know, beauty products and soap and stuff, but I don't know. I used to look at those pictures and wonder, I guess I'm just too much of like a literalist, but I would look at that and go, but, but how do they get the lid on? <laughs> It never occurred to me that it was just there to be a pretty picture. Like, that isn't actually what they're shipping. It just, you know. But anyways. Yep, so I just decided to forego all that. And show pictures of what it actually looks like. Okay, so here's um, the end being cut off right here. Alright. And so this stuff is... It's so... I don't know what the word is. But anyways, it will melt just from the warmth of my hand. So... I have to do this kind of quick and then um, I might have to set the bag aside for a minute, let it cool off and then keep going in between a few jars. Let me just see what you guys are saying real quick. Oh, wow, Stacy, that's awful. Yeah, I've had a few online uh, 
issues. One time I bought, you know, those cat wheels, those giant, like, it's almost a piece of furniture. It's a giant wheel that your cat can run on. I bought one for my cat online. And when the package arrived, like it had tracking and everything. When the package arrived, all they actually sent me was a disposable face mask. Like 10 cent worth of an item. So I opened a PayPal uh, dispute and... I don't even remember what became of it. I ended up getting I ended up getting the cat wheel, but I got it from a different source, obviously, because that was a total scam. Okay, so what I do is I, I bang these on something like on the table to release the air bubbles, but I don't want to make a ton of noise, so put it on here. There we go. So it levels out a little bit, then I can fit a little bit more. There we go. Eh, that's a little. A little bit full, but okay. Every time I look at this, it looks like a different color. Like to me now, it looks like a baby blue, but before in the bowl, it looked like a mint green. Maybe, maybe it is blue. Like, maybe that's how it... I don't know. I think the mica that I used in this is... Uh, has more, like, more than one tone to it, and that's what I'm seeing. Okay. Or maybe my eyes are going bad. All right. Mm, I keep overfilling them slightly, which is fine, except the lid will squeeze it everywhere when I put the lid on. Trying to escape the piping bag there. Too much. Okay. All right. I think that's about as full as I can get. And these are little jars. You do not need a whole lot of this stuff. It goes a long way. Another thing I like to do with them is in the summer, if I make some for myself, I'll put it in the freezer. And then when I put it on, it's like a cooling, it has like a cooling feeling when it first goes on. So just double checking what you guys are here saying here. Hello, double O, sir. Welcome. Just reading here what you're saying. Yeah, Wish is okay. A lot of times they'll pull scams like that. Um, or... It'll say, uh, this item is 10 cents or something, but then they charge you like six bucks for shipping. So the shipping costs more than the item. Oh, wow, Stacy, you got an eyedropper? Man. I would have been pretty upset. Those silicone molds are... Uh, they're not cheap. I had better luck with AliExpress. Um, especially since they have reviews and stuff. And I don't know. I had better luck with them. But that's also, you know, at your own risk kind of a thing. Let me just clean the edges of this here. Want to have a good seal with the jar with the lid when the lid goes on, and what I'm doing is just chucking these. A couple of them, um, I put a little too much 
in here and I can see that if I put the lid on it's going to squish and it's going to squish down the threads of the lid. Mm, that one might be okay. There we go. Just double checking what you guys are saying here. <laughs> He's getting so much attention now. Yeah, Patty, I typically have good luck with them. Um, and it does, it does take forever. I find that they, uh, they also have like a million shops selling the same exact thing. And they're all at slightly different prices. So sometimes I'll find a really cool mold and I'm like, oh, I want this. And then I, but then I'll check all the other shops because, you know, it might be $5 in one shop and $20 in another shop for the same exact thing. Um, but then you have to watch out for the, um, the shipping charges. So it's kind of a mess. But I found a couple of shops that I really liked and I saved them. There was one that was really good. They were a glitter manufacturer. And I was able to get, you know, sample sizes of their glitter, which, you know, from a manufacturer are pretty decent sized bags. And uh, had some really cool, really cool glitter. Like the glitters were shaped like flowers. And I had some that were like teardrop shaped. I had some that were music note shaped. And um, some really unusual ones. And there were some that... I just, I wanted to buy them, but I didn't have like a project or anything specific in use, but they were so unique. And of course they had like cat shaped glitters and, and they were holographic and they came and the holographic came in any color holographic. So you could have, you know, blue holographic or red holographic or, or whatever, sil silver holographic. Um, and anyways, I thought it would be really cool to like have an online glitter shop and just order glitters from them and then resell them here. But, um, but then uh, they ended up disappearing. Like uh, I had ordered for them from them for years, and then one day they were just gone. So I don't know if they closed shop or if they just moved off of AliExpress or what. But they just disappeared. Just seeing what you guys are saying here. The Mac Daddy of chat. Yeah, Stacey, the first time I ever saw diamond paintings was actually on AliExpress. They had some that they showed them being like gigantic wall size. And I was like, wow, that'd be so cool to do, but I don't have enough time. Okay, let me go ahead and put the lids on. Hopefully I didn't overfill these too much. And these jars, I love these little jars. They've got that quilted pattern on them. They're the really like shiny and sparkly looking. They catch the light really nice. And I think, uh, I think the reason, or one of the reasons I really like this fragrance is because it's not strong on the florals. And I'm not, I don't know if I'm allergic to florals, but I'm really sensitive to them. And if the florals are strong, it can give me a headache. And then there are certain florals that I am actually allergic to. So this is um, much better. I don't get headaches from this fragrance. So some of them are, some of them are pretty brutal, uh, especially when they're concentrated. Even if I like the fragrance, like I might like how it smells, but if it, if it gives me a headache, I can't. I can't wear a lot of it. And this fragrance also, um, this Love Spell one, um, in my shop it's called Love Spell. And I have it as a roll-on perfume as well. And one of the ways to make your fragrances last longer is by layering them. So, for example, if you um, were to use like a soap, if I had a soap, I don't know if I have any in my shop now, but I did. Um, that were scented with this. So you wash with it first 
and then you would put some of this on and then put the roll on perfume it'll make the fragrance last a lot longer so if you get um if you're going to get like a soap and a perfume and a body butter if you make them all the same fragrance or all complementary fragrances it'll last longer okay looks like they all went on okay without squeezing out so that's good I just got to label them. Thanks, Lorna. Yeah, you have to, that's right, Stacey. You do have to read the size on them. They'll show you a picture of like a, you know, 10 foot wide diamond painting and then you get it and it's like, you know, like 12 inches or something wide because it's, you know, the description tells you the actual size of the, of the painting. Um, Stacy, probably, wait, February 1st? No, it's going to need more time to cure than that. I mean, I can, I could put it, like, if, are you getting all three? I mean, I could put it there if you're getting them. Um, you would just have to let them cure. I'm just worried that they'll get damaged in the shipment, because the longer they sit, the harder the bar gets. And if it's too soft, um, it can get kind of jostled around. Although, we do, I do need to, um playing the soaps we can do that um let me show you i want to put these back so they're not sliding around on the table anymore let me go grab that soap. let me see if i can reach from here Okay, 007, thanks for joining us. All right, I'm just going to take this off for one second, maybe. Maybe it'll reach. Yeah, I might be fine. Okay, so let me check on the lighthouse. Oh, we should do the pink one, too. Okay, here's the lighthouse, and here's the blue. Let's do those. And... We can also get the pink one done. Do, do, do. Oops. This is catching on my step stool. Okay, here's the pink one. Ta da! Okay. And I needed a paper. Did I leave a paper in here? Aha, oh, there it is. Okay. So let me show you. I'm gonna, I'll go ahead and edge these soaps and finish them. And that way you can see how it will look. This is my bubbler. Oh, and I forgot. Actually, that's my planer and bubbler, but I don't use the bubbler on it. I use the planer. This is my actual bubbler. Okay. All right. So what I do is I will spray this with alcohol and plain both sides of the soap and then I will bevel the corners and then when I'm done with everything I will stamp them. This is the stamp I use. I got it custom made off somebody on Etsy. I would um, put this out. I'm gonna move let me move this body better. Thing to the body butter in here. Okay. Give myself a little more space. So, since we did the pink one first, let's start with that one. 
because it's going to probably be the firmer of the three. So I just spray this down with uh, some rubbing alcohol. This will help the soap slide through instead of smearing against the wood. It also sanitizes it and other things. So this is that soap. But you guys were saying there was a stick man in the soap, I think. So I see that makes it nice and smooth. Um, this step is not necessary. I just do it because it makes the soap look pretty. And then what happens is the little soap pieces that are planed off come out down here. They're like little sheets of soap paper. It's kind of cool. Okay. And then I typically do, um, I'll do all of like these pink ones and then move to the next color. I tried to group like light colors at the same, um, like if I had more pinks, I would do all the pinks. And then if I had, and then all the blues, I'll do kind of at once. And then that way there's less of a chance of them transferring color to each other. So it just gives it a really smooth uh, feel and finish to it. Okay. And then what I'll do, let's move this over, is I'll take this and I just go along the corners like that. And this takes off that hard corner. This also is not necessary. It just makes the bar look a little more finished. And it also makes it a little more comfortable to hold in your hand because you don't have these sharp edges like digging into your skin. Um, so for some people, they can really feel the difference. Um, I'm kind of, I don't know, ambivalent about it, but some people really, really prefer this. So, uh, but I do like how it looks. So that's why I do it. So now you got this nice kind of finished beveled edge. And this, uh, the wood and the soap planer that I'm using actually has a beveler built in. And I can show you that also. also. Um, this little angled side here is meant for you to hold the soap up against it at an angle and slide it through and it'll bevel. But I never really got the hang of it. Um, it may have just been the soap, the type of soap I was making at the time. I would let the soap get really firm before I beveled it. So these, uh, these pink ones will probably be ready to go really soon. They already feel like they're drying out. When I was beveling, you see it broke up into pieces. Uh, that means that the soap is uh, starting to really firm up. And then I just go against like the opposite way the blade is facing so I don't cut this to wipe it down. Okay. Um, but anyways, I, I didn't have as much luck going that way and it was totally user error. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the beveler, but the other thing is that it takes a very like slim edge off, off the corner. And for me, it wasn't a noticeable enough difference. So I found I was passing it through two or three times before I got that nice wide bevel. And that's just preference. Some people like a more narrow bevel. Some people like it wider. Like me, I like being able to see the bevel. Um, so I like a more like, I guess, pronounced bevel. Anyways, so go ahead and do, these are the ones that uh, Shauna suggested. She wanted three blues. So we've got like a dark navy blue, this blue vibrance, and then this pale blue, and then the blue hearts on top. And the fragrance has blue in the name as well. It's called, I think, Volca Volcano Capri Blue. I think that's how you pronounce it. It basically smells like a tropical fruit explosion. It smells so good. Trying to get the pieces off there. Um, I'll do one more and then I'll check chat. And this should be sliding through a little more smoothly. I probably should have beveled this a few days ago, but I kept wanting to do it on a live and kept forgetting. Let me see what you guys are saying here. Oh, wow, Ian. Well, good night. I hope you stay warm. Oh, thanks, Ian. Yeah, it's really cool. I like this bubble. I had it, um, there's somebody on uh, Etsy that hand makes these, so. Um, what do I do with the shavings? What I do typically is I collect them and, um, and hoard them. No, just kidding. Um, I use them to make confetti soaps. 
either uh, like I have a I have a yellow confetti soap that I made. Um, I have some in my shop. And uh, here's how the blue papers look. It's neat. It looks like paisley fabric or something. I don't know. But yeah, I'll, I'll use them in like a confetti soap or um, when I have a custom order for confetti soap, I'll use it in that. And it looks really, really cool in this in the confetti soaps because you get as you use the soap, the colors are constantly changing. It just looks like a bar full of confetti. There we go. So you can see it kind of gives it a more, I don't know, finished look or something. All right, get the next bar. And then we'll do the lighthouses last. And you can see how these ones, the corners, are staying in whole pieces when I bevel them. That's because this bar hasn't been sitting out curing for as long. So it's still soft that it, the bevels come off real nice in one piece. Okay. So those are finished. Got to make the hearts all go the same direction. All right, and then we'll do the lighthouse soap. That's what they look like. Um, let me see if I can show you like a before and after. So I don't know if it'll even show up on camera, but there's a, a kind of a, a subtle difference, but it's noticeable. This looks really smooth and finished and polished, and this looks a little bit more rustic on this side. And, and it's very, very subtle, but um, I think it looks nice. That's why I do it. But if people don't care, I don't have to bubble the soaps. Like, I could just leave them without the bubbling, um, if people prefer that, but I always like how it, how it looks when I do it, so. And it only takes a few minutes. So I'll, I'll do the same thing as before. So you can see, like, this just looks a little bit more polished than this one does. Does that make sense? I don't know. I, like I said, I don't know if it's coming up, showing up on camera, but but in person, you can you can see it's a noticeable difference. You guys like that design? This one that Stacy recommended or requested. She wanted lighthouses, and that's what we got: lighthouses. Okay, so that one was all right. All right, so that's that's beveling. And then, like I said, it just makes it the bar more comfortable to hold. I don't bevel the tops because I don't like to disturb the design up there. And I've never, like, I, I've tried it before, but I never really felt like it made, it wasn't always a positive effect when I did it and since the top is a lot of times uneven because of like the the um the stormy kind of design we did up there um if I was to bevel this it would you could see how it looks like almost like clouds it's like uneven the bevel would be uneven too and it would just I don't know so I never do the tops because I feel like it disturbs the the design on top and it doesn't help anything the bottom and the sides are formed by the mold and the cutting so they're always relatively square so that's why the beveling looks so nice so um, those are the lighthouse soaps and then what I'll do is I will stamp them later I have to get some stuff to finish the stamping so um, just seeing what you guys are talking about Yeah, Stacy. Um, yeah, I can I can set one aside for you. There we go. Oh, let's see how the papers look. Ooh. 
if the soaps are super soft, like if I if I um, plane them right after I make the soap, sometimes these papers are still mm, pliable enough to where I can completely unroll them flat. And they look kind of cool. You can see the different shades of blue in there. I'll break this off real quick. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but it looks super cool. It's neat unrolling them and seeing the thin, really super thin design. I was thinking of doing a, you know, um, a soap design based off of these little papers, like making a million little papers and doing something with them, but I haven't done it yet. Anyways, but yeah, so that's a big pile of those. And then let me see if I have, I can show you the other soap shavings. Let me see if I can, if I have them handy. Oh, I put them away. Maybe I could reach from here. One sec, let me move this real quick. Alright, so it was there, it was just on the the um, microphone didn't reach. Okay. Let me open this real quick. I just show you how I do this. So here is my container of soap paper. So here's that autumn, the one with the moon, the glow in the dark moon. Um Here's Autumn Breeze. Here's that confetti soap. So I've made confetti out of the confetti soap. I don't know if you can see. Um, here's, I think that one, I think this one might be from uh, September. Um, and then here's the neons. But then what I do is I just crumble them. They crumble into smaller pieces and I can put them in the soaps. <laughs> Save paper and make a running stick man. That's a good idea. I'm just seeing what you guys are saying here. <laughs> spoiled. <laughs> well, everybody can be spoiled. I'm happy to spoil everyone. Just let me know what you want me to make and we will do it. Yeah, Stacy, she did. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and make the um, uh, the lavender milk that she wanted, and we'll do it on probably one of the next lives pretty soon. I figured we could make a a whole um, uh, a video on it. I thought that'd be fun. So maybe I can even use one of the larger molds. We'll have to see. But yeah, this is way this is the way I uh, don't waste any soap. There we go. See, ta-da! Go and make sure that I didn't miss any. No. Nope. And where did I put the lid? Right there. I blinked and forgot where I put it. Okay. There we go. Oh good, I'm glad it came. Yeah, I'm always worried when things get shipped international. Um, te technically I do, I can ship international. I don't know if I have my, my shop set up to do it. I'm always nervous about it though because um, I'm, nervous to, I'm nervous about it because I've had so many things just not arrive. And then, I mean, the shipping can be like $50 and then I'm out that money. So, um, you know, if someone orders, you know, $10 worth of soap and it costs $50 to ship and then they never get it, um, you know, the, uh, it's not like the post office is going to refund me the $50. So that's why I've just kind of been nervous about doing it. I don't, I don't sell enough yet to be able to absorb those costs. So, um, 
I can check and see if the shipping is set up for international. I just don't remember if I did or not. That's all. Um, but yeah, it does make me nervous, but I mean, I can, and I will ship to certain places, but, um, I was talking to that, talking about that, um, with a group of mine, uh, a group that I'm in about, you know, um, about shipping internationally. And supposedly there's a way to like exclude certain countries that are just notorious for having shipping problems. So what I may do is, uh, use that feature and places like the UK are typically fine. And, um, you know, so I may, most places in Europe typically are okay to ship to. Australia is usually fine. Um, so I might go ahead and I'll just check my shipping, my shipping settings and see. Because I don't want her to have to, like, have the shipping go twice, right? Go to you and then to her. That that will just delay it for her. Um, night, India. Have a good night. But yeah, guys, um... I should probably let you go. I've been keeping you here. Um, but definitely leave me comments about what you want me to make. We'll do that lavender milk and um, in one of the next lives. I could have sworn there was another request we had to do. Oh, Ian wanted the um, Asian orange soap. So I'll try to figure out how to do that. Um, I'll find out if he wants bars or if he wants me to try the, the other form like a it's like a pasty i don't know if you guys have seen like that orange clean stuff it's like a it's like a gel almost um and i think there are a couple others so um but yeah we'll try to get through all the requests and then i will also be making more body butter because i know you guys had asked for vanilla um so i've already i've actually already got the the body butter set up i just have to um scent it and and then put it into jars and stuff so um if, in fact, if you guys have a fragrance you'd like besides the vanilla, let me know, and we we can do that. I think I'm going to do um, I think I'm going to do lavender and rose also. I'll do like vanilla, lavender, and rose, and possibly something else. To ship D DSL to other countries, they don't have a problem when it comes to um. I've done DSL. Um, I think I know what you're talking about. Um, I've used them. They're okay. Um, and it just, it just depends on the country that I'm shipping to. I've had, I've had to ship packages to places like India and, um, different African countries and places like that. And the packages literally don't arrive, you know, cause the tracking will say it entered the destination country and then it just, there's, then it stops updating the tracking. And sometimes two months later, the customer will say, oh yeah, I got, got my stuff, but it took like two months after it entered their country for them to get it. Um, other times it just never arrives. Um, sometimes um, six months later, I'll get the package returned in the mail, and I'm like, "Why am I? Why was this returned?" You know, and there's no explanation. Um, it's just, yeah. But it's usually those other countries like that that are just difficult. Um, Europe is usually fine. Australia is usually fine. Although I, yeah, let me see what you guys are saying real quick here. But yeah, okay. Well, everybody, have a great night. I'm going to go ahead and finish cleaning this up, and I'll. Uh, probably be doing the next live on Monday, and then uh, we'll probably do more body butter, or um, we can do that. Actually, no, I want to do that soap, that lavender milk soap. Oh. Yeah, the post office, Stacy, it is pretty quick. I haven't had, I mean, going to, going to Europe, I haven't had that much of a problem. It's been everywhere else, so... Alrighty, guys. Have a good night, and thanks for hanging out. And I'll see you guys Monday. Bye.